Here's a quick video on stainless steel lap joint, quarter inch thickness, 304L stainless. We're going to give some tips and some clear arc shots and some simple explanations. First off, stainless steels don't require as much amperage as carbon steel. So for this joint right here, even though it's quarter inch thick, would normally require about 140 amps to 150. On stainless, I'm only at 105 and it's about right. I'm using a 332 2% seriated electrode today. I usually use 2% lanthanated. I'm experimenting. Seems to be holding a sharp tip really well. For stainless steels, what you want to do is you want to get the puddle started right away. You don't want to wait around. So when you light up, you need to get that puddle started within about two seconds and get that puddle moving. That way heat won't build up. Something I've noticed on stainless steel is that one size smaller on the filler metal seems to help sometimes. It doesn't apply to every single situation, but I'm using a 1 rod here. I'm using the Prime Weld TIG 325 for this video and I'm plugged into 115 volt power. Because I'm only on 105 amps, it's no problem. Let's see if there's any differences in the cleaned versus not cleaned area. I don't see a whole lot. There were some subtle differences in some oxides floating around in the puddle and things like that. Didn't make a tremendous difference. But then again, this is just a simple lap joint, not an x-ray pipe weld. Because I'm filming this, I had time to let it cool down between welds, so I'm still only needing 105 amps for these straight welds. I like to use 2% lanthanated tungsten for an all-purpose electrode when I'm welding, switching back and forth from metal types. But for this video, I'm giving a 2% seriated a try out. And they do seem to hold a point a little bit longer on DC. I would say that if you mostly weld on DC with only occasionally welding aluminum, 2% seriated is not a bad choice. The number 7 clear cup did a pretty good job on shielding here, but I'm going to switch over to the Jazzy 10 ceramic for a little bit better shielding for a second pass. This cup is a great choice for stainless steel as well as 4130 chromoly. I bumped up to a 332 diameter filler metal for this second pass so that I can just kind of use the lay wire technique and weave over top of that first pass, trying to just, just fill it in to that corner. And for this pass, I only needed about 95 amps. This is 304L stainless steel, quarter inch thick. I'm using 332 308L filler metal. You wouldn't always have to put a second pass on metal this thickness, but if the drawing called for a quarter inch fillet on quarter inch thick metal, then you'd have to fill it up right to that corner. So there's a two-pass fillet weld done using a Jazzy 10 cup, a Prime Weld TIG 325 with 308 filler metal on 304L quarter inch thick stainless. You want to maintain the stainless properties whenever you're welding stainless steel. Here are some best practices that will help you do that. Use a dedicated stainless wire brush and dedicated grinding wheels. Don't use wheels or brushes that have been used on carbon steel. Stainless seems to love argon, so a gas lens can really help. One of my favorite cups is this Jazzy 10 ceramic because it's got those secondary diffusers in there. So you can put that on a regular gas lens collet body and not even use any more gas than you would with a number 8 and use a longer stick out and get better coverage. Establish your puddle and get moving quickly. Don't hang around forever waiting to get that filler rod in there. Go ahead and get that puddle established within about two seconds get moving, outrun the heat. For best results on a full penetration weld, you need a purge. There might be a few exceptions, but a sanitary weld like this is not one of them. You absolutely must have a good purge for a sanitary pipe weld. When I say sanitary, I mean for food service or pharmaceutical, you absolutely must have a purge on the inside of that stainless pipe. You cannot afford to have those rough surfaces that you get with a sugared weld like you will get without a purge. I'm welding here with just air on the backside. When we turn that thing over, Fido's butt. This provides all kinds of areas for bacteria to grow, and that's not what you want. So there's a not purged weld, and here is a purged weld, like night and day. Hey, listen, I support these videos with my online store at weldmonger.com. I've got furic cups like the Jazzy 10 used in this video. 
dual flow meters for purging, a good assortment of high quality tungsten electrodes, and TIG filler rod. I've also got plenty of videos showing how to use the products that we sell. That's weldmonger.com. I would appreciate a visit.